Well, everything here is pretty much going to be from Lose It. Here's the first one from Mayflower. Every issue in my life could be fixed by losing weight, or vastly improved. My increasing A1C, my depression, my chronic snoring, sleep apnea, my suspected PCOS, my low energy, and lethargy. I've decided to stop shaming myself for gaining 125 pounds over the last 16 years. Yes, I am responsible for my weight gain. Yes, I could have changed my eating and exercise habits years ago, but I didn't. It's no longer relevant. What is relevant is how I plan to change my habits now, today. I'm finally ready to be uncomfortable in a way that benefits me. I'm finally ready to track my food intake and start an exercise routine. I don't want another year to go by and be exactly where I am now or worse. It's time. Adventurous Status writes, Non-American perspective. It's not carbs, but something is wrong with American food. I see a lot of people talking about carbs in this weight loss forum. This is a little strange to me because I come from a country where literally every person eats rice. Every single meal of the day, almost, and rice, Japan, probably constitutes 50% of that meal as well, and nobody is fat. Maybe 1 in 50 people or something, but you do not see fat people normally, despite most of what everyone is eating being rice. However, when I came to America for studies, after about one year, I started to gain weight. Almost 10 kilograms, after being normal weight my entire life, and never even thinking about weight. I do not even eat a bunch of sodas or candies or other things either. I do not know what's wrong with the food in America, but there is something wrong. I don't think you should feel bad about getting overweight in this country. I also suggest if you want to lose weight, and you can, move to Japan. Dash Rockwell replies, From an American, added sugar is everywhere in packaged food. Portions are huge in restaurants. Save for a few select American cities, Americans don't walk anywhere. We drive. Americans generally have a pretty terrible work-life balance. Couple that with our negligible social safety net and complete lack of social services that are well-established given in much of the rest of the first world, our collective stress and cortisol levels are through the roof. What can that lead to? Overeating. A lot of poorer regions of America are food deserts where it's incredibly difficult for people living there to access affordable, fresh, whole foods on a regular basis, so they eat more prepared, packaged goods. And on and on. These are the big ones in my mind. I'd just like to add that for rice, there's the benefit of it's rice. Unlike with bread, where the ingredients can vary and they can add more sugar if they feel like it, rice is rice, and there really isn't any added sugar to it. Straight Ad writes, Teens yelled at me in the street and have crushed my spirit. I'm a 27-year-old woman and weigh about 130 kilograms. 286 pounds. I've been overweight my whole life and have finally found the motivation to change my life. Since November, I've lost about 20 or so kilograms. Not 100% on the actual numbers as I didn't weigh myself at the start. I've been feeling so good and confident in myself in the last couple of months. Today, I had a long day at work and had picked up some fast food on the way home, which fits in my daily calories. As I was getting out of my car, two teenage boys, 15 or so, were waiting for the bus and yelled, whale, at me. I was in complete shock and have been crying nonstop. I know logically that these are just stupid kids, but I'm so hurt by this. Nobody had ever said anything about me or my body like this in public before, and I'm absolutely destroyed. How do I shake off this horrible feeling? Feast Fritchie. Nothing on the planet is dumber than teen boys. Obviously, they're talking in general, not any specific teen boy. As someone who works with teens, trust me, they're idiots, all of them. You're overweight, you know that. They said something mean about it. That's all that happened. You're working on it. You'll be fine. Since that event, they haven't spent another second thinking about you. And you don't need to spend another second thinking about them. Autumn Song writes, Anyone ever feel discouraged because you lost weight, gained it back and more, and now have to lose it again? I'm sure this is true of everyone. I just looked at my weight loss transformation from August to now. Everyone who I've shown the progress photos to tells me there's a huge difference. I'm happy about this and other small wins, like feeling more comfortable in an airplane, fitting into some old clothes better. But I used to be incredibly skinny. I can't help but look back on the photos of myself three years ago when I was thin, and when I had no back rolls and small arms, I feel discouraged because I'm not her again. Like, just the timing makes me mad. I'm doing a good job, 
but I'm just not where I was once before, when I was really confident about my appearance. <sighs> I know this too shall pass. Grow your hair, writes. One of the best things I've done for my weight loss journey is learn not to freak out when the scale goes up. My previous weight loss attempts consisted of trying for a week, being frustrated when the scale didn't move or even went up and I'd give up. This time around I'm anticipating my weight fluctuating because, well, that's what happens. If you mess up and see the scale shoot up 2 or 3 pounds, don't panic and just keep doing what you've been doing. It will go down again fairly quickly. Most of it is water weight and not actually fat gain. For instance, on Friday I made the poor decision to door dash a lot of food and ate until my stomach hurt. The next morning, I weighed myself and I was up 2.2 pounds. That was expected, so I didn't get upset or give up. I went back to my normal routine and this morning the scale was back down 1.7 pounds. Don't give up because the only way you're going to get there is consistency. Another something writes, smacked in the face with reality. I made a very frustrated post here a couple days ago complaining about how I'm not losing any weight anymore, and that I'd been in a plateau for three months. You know what I did? I went back to my fitness pal and looked at the diaries from the beginning of my journey when I was dropping lots of weight. I was shocked. Back then I was consistently eating between 1300 and 1500 calories a day and doing one to two hours of rigorous exercise every single day. I fell in love with biking, and I was biking for hours and hours after work every day. Then winter came, the snow came, and I can't bike anymore. Still waiting for it to melt. I know how they feel. Winter is the worst. Nowadays, I've been eating 1,500 to 1,800 calories a day, and I do maybe 30 minutes to an hour on my stationary bike every day. Super slow and zero effort. Whereas before, on my real bike, I was going up hills out of breath and heart racing. So, duh. Of course I haven't been losing weight. I feel like such an idiot right now. I truly thought I hadn't changed anything, but I'm eating 300 to 500 calories more and exercising 500 calories less. I'm going to prioritize my deficit for now, and I'm going to get back into biking seriously as soon as this darn snow melts. That's all. If you're feeling delusional like me, check your MyFitnessPal history. You might be in for a shock, too. Almost not fat anymore, writes. One positive body dysmorphia keeps you fat. I say positive because body dysmorphia has the usual negative correlation of seeing yourself more overweight than you truly are. But have any of you seen yourselves as not that fat until you finally lost weight, saw an older picture and realized your self-perception was distorted? I've currently lost 30 pounds since last year, and I stumbled upon a picture from right before the weight loss. I was honestly shocked by how much I had ballooned up, and just wasn't seeing it. When I looked at that exact picture over a year ago, I knew I was curvy, but I didn't think I was bordering on obese. Grasping the fact that my brain doesn't see my body accurately is so strange. It's like I can't even trust my own eyes. I now realize that weighing myself more frequently, throughout maintenance, is crucial for me looking at the facts objectively. Tarot Admirable writes, Should I eat what I want on my birthday? This will be my second birthday I have been allowed to celebrate. I was previously in a religion that didn't allow it. I think that's Jehovah's Witness, but there might be other religions too. I have no one to celebrate with other than my young children. I've lost 50 pounds in a year and for the past few months have not lost any additional weight, but have been maintaining. I need to lose another 50 pounds, but have not been strict with my diet, and have been satisfied with maintaining. On my birthday, I would like to start the day at the Pancake House, then hop over to Starbucks for my free birthday drink. Then for lunch, have a steak and free dessert at Chili's. Just the dessert is over 1,200 calories, and I usually split it with my children. Then for dinner, I will make something just normal, but have birthday cake with my kids. Is that too much for one day? Perhaps if I only eat salads with no dressing this week, I can do it. Feeling a bit down that I have no one to celebrate with, but perhaps I should try to cheer myself up with food. But then again, it's just one day, and I feel I deserve a day. I'm taking the day off, and the kids will be in school. Thoughts? What do you do on your birthday? Update. Thank you for all the responses. I couldn't respond to everyone. I had a great birthday, but it did turn into a birthday weekend. On my actual birthday, I had pancakes at IHOP, a large frozen drink at Starbucks, steak, corn, mashed potatoes, and lava cake at Chili's birthday cake at home with kids. I did also go to the gym on my birthday. Then on the weekend, some friends treated the children and I to lunch. 
both before and after my birthday, I ate as I usually do, and today I'm actually 0.5 pounds lighter than on my birthday, although I don't think I actually lost any fat. Your birthday is only one day a year. The thing that matters for your health and well-being is what you do on an average day, the average of all the days of the year. So one particular day doesn't actually affect things that much. So yeah, enjoy your birthday. Outrageous ad writes, Weight loss and pretty privilege. I want to preface this by saying that I am extremely proud of my 120-pound weight loss. However, recently, experiences with men have made me really uncomfortable, and sometimes I think it would be easier if I just weighed as much as I did before. Having been overweight most of my life, I was always the funny, friendly, bigger girl. But now, since losing weight and fitting into more conventional beauty standards, I increasingly find it hard to have a platonic relationship with male friends. It's kind of ridiculous, but inside I'm still the same previous fun personality, but now it's being perceived by men as flirty, or as if I'm interested in them. I don't know how to act. I recently came back from a work trip with a colleague who made me feel really uncomfortable by hitting on me. He was also extremely older then. Whole other story, lol. Why do men think I'm interested in them when I'm just being nice, but 120 pounds ago they thought it was just being nice? Rant over, it just sucks that people treat you differently when you're slimmer, and as a woman it can be difficult to navigate platonic male friendships. I don't know exactly what happened to her, but I can explain from a male point of view. It's possible that when she was overweight, people thought she was flirting with them, but they didn't react because they wanted to pretend like she wasn't. That is to say, they weren't interested back. Now that she's thinner, it's possible that the men get a little bit excited when they look at her, and so some of their thought processes start to get a bit dumber. New Gap writes, How I lost 250 pounds and why I do it all differently. I'm writing this partially for myself, as a bit of a personal catharsis, and to open up about something I've kept very private. But it's also for anyone who can relate to or take anything from my journey. Warnings for content around disordered eating below. I got out of a really toxic relationship in September 2018, where I estimated my peak weight was 430 pounds. From September 2018 to May 2020, I lost 270 pounds with my lowest weight around 155. Wow, that's a lot, and really fast, you might say. Yep, hence the title of what I'd do differently. I'll pause for a second if you want to look at his pictures. My brain works better in bullets, so here we go. How I did it. I should note that most of my life I've not lived in a heavier body, which probably contributes as to why I was able to lose the weight fast. My body just wasn't used to having that weight on. I gained all that weight over a period of 6-7 to seven years prior to 2018. I wanted to lose the weight so badly, so quickly that I was willing to do whatever. Early on I was losing about a pound a day just by reducing my food intake to relatively whole foods, which was relatively fine at first. I pretty much ate protein and vegetables with some grains and was able to make it by. After about 100 pounds, it started to become harder, and I really reduced my food intake. At one point, I actively started pushing to eat 1,500 calories and then later 1,200 calories. This was a bad idea. I picked up rock climbing at 230 pounds in addition to doing cardio. I'm still climbing, and it's become a true passion in my life, but realistically, I don't think it did much for my weight loss. Eventually, I got obsessive about doing 30 minutes to an hour of cardio a day and added in weightlifting. I kept pushing my food intake lower and lower, while obsessively tracking calories and daily steps activity. None of this was sustainable and healthy, if you haven't gotten this by now. The lowest I got was about 155 with 12% body fat. I felt literally awful all the time, was just skin and bones. March of last year, I got into therapy to help with the disordered eating and the body image issues I developed. Since then, I've gotten into therapy, gained about 20 pounds, a mix of muscle and needed fat, and don't feel terrible all the time anymore. Physical and mental things I experienced. I wanted to write this section for anyone who might benefit from reading any of this to know there are others who have experienced similar things, but also to know the ugly side of doing what I did. During my peak restriction, I started to feel dizzy, have hair loss, feel tired literally all the time. I can remember not being able to get off the couch without feeling like I was going to fall over. Hard to tell if that's extremely low blood pressure, low salt levels, or exactly what's going on there. But it seems pretty clear he was cutting his intake too much. 
As I got more interested in fitness, between cardio and lifting, I can distinctly remember walking away from sessions feeling physically ill because I was underserving my body the fuel it needed during high-intensity sessions. It's a garbage feeling to almost fall over with dizziness after a deadlift. You might not know this, but passing out from a deadlift is actually frighteningly common, and not always due to restriction. It has to do with your blood pressure crashing after doing a deadlift. On the mental side, I had developed a fudged up relationship with food. I was severely restricting, had binge purge cycles, and built up poor frameworks about nutrition. I personally don't believe anything is as easy as sicko or any fad diet anymore. Nutrition is tough, and not one size fits all. No matter how much marketing would have you believe. I started to see food as the enemy, and feeling ashamed for being full and guilty if I ate too much. I still haven't gotten over these, but I'm working through it. Body image is tricky. When I started losing weight, I imagined I'd have this perfect body at the end, and I'd feel so great about everything. Well, that's not the case. I have a ton of extra skin. Don't let this scare you into not losing weight, though. I kept pushing so hard to lose fat because I thought it would help mitigate my saggy chest showing through shirts. It really didn't. Part of my therapy the last year has been coming to accept my body and everything I've gone through, even if it still makes me uncomfortable. Fortunately, I've been able to save up enough to get surgery done in May on my chest, stomach, and lower back, but I know going into it that I still won't be Brad Pitt at the end of it. But imagine if I was. That's actually kind of a weird thing for him to write. I went back to his picture. He's actually a pretty good-looking guy. In some ways, he looks friendlier than Brad Pitt. What I'd do differently. Seek out professional help. I tried to do everything myself because of my personality and a fear of sharing all my insecurities around this process. Since losing most of my weight, I've talked to doctors, therapists, nutritionists who have more nuanced, valuable insight than some BS article written for SEO clicks. Listen to my friends less. My friends were amazing for motivation and nothing but supportive, but their commentary wormed its way into my head. It's not their fault at all, but all the encouragement pushed me to do even more. And as much as my friends think they eat healthy, they don't know anything about nutrition. Go so much slower. I just wanted to be done as quickly as possible, and fortunately for me it worked out, without any negative physical long-term side effects. But I'd have set myself up for success so much better if I'd done it over a time period, twice as long as I did. Do more resistance training. I got to a super low weight, but lost so much muscle. I was trying to climb, but was super weak. There's some promising research on the overall health benefits of resistance training, and I wish I had consistently done it through my journey. Be nicer to myself. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I still struggle with this daily. Therapy has helped me identify a lot of negative self-talk, and I pushed myself really hard. People used to ask me how I was losing that much weight, and I'd say, you just have to hate yourself enough. Big oof, looking back on it. TLDR, my weight loss and overall life journey, was one of pushing myself too hard to be perfect and realizing afterward there is no perfect. Life is hard, and weight loss in itself didn't make me fulfilled, no matter how much I worked to achieve my goals. If I'd had to give any advice to anyone, I'd say to be smart about things, try to utilize reliable and professional resources if they're available, and be kind to yourself no matter what's happening on your path. Merrill Learn writes, You cannot break your metabolism. I'm just so sick of hearing this advice. First, it was starvation mode. Then it was metabolic damage. Then it was metabolic adaptation, which exists, but the version that influencers are giving you is not correct. You do not break or damage your metabolism. Your metabolism doesn't do that. It adapts constantly every day. It's one of the things that has contributed to our success as a species. Not sure why they say that. All mammals do that. When you move from a large house to a small apartment building, what happens to your energy bill? It lowers. Unless you're using an abnormal amount of energy in that small apartment, it takes less energy to heat the apartment, cool the apartment, etc. But our bodies aren't houses or apartments. That doesn't matter. Energy is energy. The exact same mechanism is happening in your body. It's not damage, it's normal. Pig Weenies writes, Does walking every day yield substantial results as a morbidly obese person? Hi, I'm severely obese, around 400 pounds last I checked, a few weeks ago, and I've been sticking to my lifestyle changes, and I'm down about 30 pounds from where I started a few months ago. I've mostly just been eating properly and watching portions, not focusing on exercise much at all. My question is, if walking every day would yield results? He writes more, but that's that's the part I want to answer. 
And the answer is yes. At his weight, every mile he walks burns 220 calories. They're burning calories faster than some people do when they're running. Yes, that's going to have a major effect on how fast you gain or lose weight. Hey, you've made it to the end of the video. If you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. If you really liked it, consider becoming a member. Members at the two highest levels get their name read out as a thank you every time I make one of these videos. Members at the highest level also get a short video every couple of weeks as well about something fat logic related. Any help you can give me is, of course, always much appreciated. I'd like to thank top members Emmett McNally, Rig, Cupcake or Death, MMC, Megtran2000, Gato, That One Guy, Maria P, Average Loser, Wolf Child Rusk, Just a Girl, I Cuddle Cats, and Orale Christine. Your support is very much appreciated. I wish all of you wonderful people a wonderful day.